Good morning. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Nancy. Hope you're both doing well today. Good morning to Lori. Good to see you this morning. Got chilly again. I don't remember who I was talking to. I was talking to uh, Mike and Amanda Wilson last night. Um, we were at Tuesday small group. We meet at uh, we meet at the Westway Building in the Fireside Room on Tuesday nights for small group. And when when uh, when they came in the building, they were both like shivering and cold. And I was like, yep, yesterday was, this is like fourth winter for us. So, um, it is supposed to be nice tomorrow. I think it's supposed to be 70 degrees tomorrow. Um, so that'll be nice. But then it goes back into the, back into the 40s. We have one more 70 day, and then it's all like 40s and 50s next week. So, I knew this was going to happen. It has, um... I think it snowed every Mother's Day since we've been here, but somebody told me it did not snow last year, so um, I guess it hasn't snowed every Mother's Day, but it feels like it has snowed. How about this? It snowed three of the last four Mother's Days um, here in western Nebraska, so winter is technically over, but we are still in the midst of the cold weather. So I put our heat on again, back on last night. We had it turned off, I think, for four days. Uh, we have this, we have this little policy in our house. Um, we've had this for a long, long time. But um, like when we transition, you know, you turn you turn off your heat, and then at some point you put your air conditioning on. And our little the little policy at the Mulholland house is when we turn off the when we turn off the heat in our house um we are we are not allowed to turn the air conditioning on for 30 days after we turn the heat off um because we um like the way we talk about it is we like one nice uh, electric bill um and then in the and then in the fall when we turn the air conditioning off, um, we are not allowed to turn the heat on uh, also for 30 days. Um, so we have like this, um, sometimes that gets, um, that means the, hot, the house gets really hot uh, in the spring. And then it also means that the house gets pretty cool um, in the fall while we're waiting in those 30 days. But um, I, I think we might have talked, I might have talked about this last year. Um, the nice thing is we have a um, so we have a gas fireplace in our house so we kind of cheat on the on the winter side. What um, in that thirty days of waiting after the air conditioning gets turned off and before we actually turn like the furnace on, uh, we cheat a little bit and we run the fireplace if it gets really cool in the house um, to take the just to take the chill out of the family room. So so that's kind of our little policy thing. All that to say, last night I turned the heat back on, so, um, yeah. So now 30 days until the air comes on, but I know it's at least going to be cold for the next week. Because um, when I told Ann, I said, hey, I put the furnace on, she was like, she was like, no, you didn't. Because she knew that we were like already almost a week into, um, into that 30 days for the air conditioning. Um, so that has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about today. But that just, now you're in the mind of the Mulholland house and the way we do things. Um, well, good morning. Uh, good morning to Charlotte. <coughs> good morning to those others of you uh, that are watching with us today. Um, I want to encourage you to go ahead and open your Bible to uh, Genesis 16. And we have been, um, yeah, we've just been going through the book of We've just been going through the book of Genesis, and we are uh, pretty deep. We're a few, several, how about this, we're several chapters deep into the Abram story. 
Um, God has made a number of covenants with Abraham, how he's going to make Abram into, or he's not Abraham yet. He's going to make Abram a great nation. Abram says, how can you make me into a great nation? How can you, what good are all of your blessings if I don't have any children? Um, so God, uh, God tells him he will have a child. And as we talked about yesterday, we have this thing where, where Abram cuts these animals in half. Um, or God tells him to get these animals. They cut them in half. Um, this was a covenant sign. God walks um, in between the animals, which essentially is saying, hey, if I don't keep my end of the bargain, may I become like these animals. Um, interestingly, uh, Abram did not walk between the animals um, himself. So we kind of know that Abram is going to um, miserably fail in his um, on keeping up his side of the bargain, um, and we're going to see that today. It does not get very deep, very much further into the Abram story before um, Abram just does not uh, does not do what God wants him to, um, doesn't trust God. So, excuse me. So we're going to see this story now. Um, we've been talking about this on Sundays at Westway, where, um, where, where mankind is constantly given the choice um, to follow God and trust in, his, trust in God's plan, trust in God's goodness, trust in God's purpose and design, and or am I going to follow myself? deny what God has as a best practice for me, and am I going to do my own thing? So what do you think Abram is going to do? Let's find out. We're in Genesis 16. Um, follow along with me in your Bible or on your app, however you do that. Um, let's read Genesis 16 together. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian servant and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened ten years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So you can already see, you can already imagine, if you're familiar with this story, whether you're familiar with the story or not, you can already see, like, this is a pretty horrible situation. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. Notice what Sarai says and does next. Then Sarai said to Abram, This is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant... She treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Like, what in the world? Um, we talked about when we, were re when we read through Genesis 3, right? Blame shifting. We talked about how when, when things go wrong, we blame other people. When we create problems, we blame other people. And here's what Sarah is doing. She has this really supposedly great idea um, to take control of their future, to take control of their own destiny from what God has for them, they're going to do it their way. Um, and I think there are lots of times, um, like, it's easy to judge. So what I almost said was, hopefully you've never done anything like this. Um, <clears throat> but I think we all, there are times where we think, we know better than God. I think there are times where we think we have to take control of a situation where we, where we make our own decisions and we tell ourselves, well, this must be what God wants. This must be how God is going to accomplish this. So, I'm, so God has given me this promise and I'm going to bring it about in my own way. That's a lot of what we see happening here in this story. Abram replied, look, she's your servant, so deal with, your, deal with her as you see fit. 
Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. What a, this is a terrible story. This is terrible, what's happening here. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. And the angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and what are you doing? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, you are, to name, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Therefore, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well, so that well was named Beer Lahai Roi, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. So again, this is a terrible story. God has promised something to Abraham. He's promised something to Sarai. And, and rather, than, rather than waiting for what God has for them, rather than doing it, I didn't mean it like that, rather than, rather than yeah, rather than doing it, rather than, Rather than doing it God's way, following God's plan, um, <clears throat> they chose, they just chose their own path. They wanted to take control of their own life and do it that way. And it only, like it only brings chaos, death, and destruction. We've talked about that a lot. Doing things our own way, rejecting what God has for us, only always leads to chaos, death, and destruction. That's always the path that that goes down. Um, it's, I think it's in the Gospel of John. Um, Jesus says something to the effect of, the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you would have life, and life to the fullest. Like we are seeing, whether it was, let's see, whether it was Eve eating the apple, whether it was Cain killing his brother, whether it was Tubal, like I think that was Tubal Cain, right, or Lamech, um, who killed um, who killed two people. Yeah, it was Lamech killed two people. Um, let's see, we could just keep going here. Whether it is um, people, this is from Genesis six. Um, the sons of God saw beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. Whether it's that, um, whether it is um, the Tower of Babel, like all of these things, whether it is Lot choosing what looks like the better land, like every single instance that we find, whenever people do their own thing and reject what, has, what God has for them, it always leads to chaos, death, and destruction. It never, ever, 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 ever works out. And yet, we know that. We know that's true. And we choose chaos, death, and destruction. Maybe not you. I'm sure you are way more moral than me. Um, but I frequently choose my own path over God's. So I get chaos, death, and destruction. And then I'm in the same spot here as, as, as Sarai. Like, I, I bring all of these problems on myself by my disobedience, and then I blame other people, right? And I think we all fall into this spot of we create problems and then we want someone else to fix it for us. And that's exactly what happened here. Like if we were to, if we were to, um, you may or may not know this, um, but um, essentially Ishmael 
um, the, 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 the family of Islam um, came, came from Ishmael's line. So where it says, um, he'll raise his fist against everyone, everyone will be against him. Yes, he'll live in open hostility against all his relatives. Like we look at what's happening in the Middle East right now, like we think of Israel, we think of the Promised Land, we think of, um, of the Jewish people, and the Islamic people or the Arab people, like we look at that and we think, oh, this has only been happening for a few cent a few decades, maybe a few centuries. No, that animosity between those people groups goes back to this right here, to this moment. Like we we see this played out um, today. Th these I, I don't want to say like these people like I'm judging them because because I'm, I'm not judging them. But, like, these people have been fighting with each other since this moment. That history of animosity goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 16. And what's interesting about Islam is, um, is they look at, like, they, Islam teaches the story in the reverse way. Israel, er, Islam teaches that Ishmael was the true son of Abram and um, and Isaac <coughs> was the false son or the bad son of Abraham. So little history lesson there for you today. Um, but don't but don't miss like when we try to when we try to take control of what God has for us and do it our own way, it always leads to chaos, death, and destruction. And it just it just follows that grid of when we get caught, when we get found out, we blame other people. Um, sometimes we're proud of our sin, like Lamech was. Um, like we're just not affected by it. We don't think that <clears throat> we don't think that our choices and our decisions have any effect. And this is like, again, this is a terrible story from Genesis um, 16. You know, we, we like, um, even, even sometimes I think the way we've looked at the way these things are written kind of glosses over the reality. Verse 3, so Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar as the Egyptian servant and gave her to Abram as his wife. Like, that sounds so wonderful, Right? Well, until you read the rest of the story, and then it's pretty stinking terrible. Like, there was nothing honorable about what they were doing. This was, ab this was, sec like, this was sexual abuse. This is a terrible story. And it's, it, it, it's what happens when people choose their own will, their own desires their own desire, designs over what God has for them. It never works out the way we think that it will. And I don't know about you, but I know I need to hear that all the time. I need to constantly be reminded that God's will is best. And God's going to work through it, right? God's gonna, We're going to read through the rest of this. God's going to work this out, but it just... Just it's just so interesting how these seemingly insignificant choices, and there's nothing insignificant about what's going on here. I don't want to minimize the sin. I'm, <clears throat> in fact, I'm hoping that you are. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping that you're kind of looking at this story in a different way. Like I don't want to minimize any of this. This is just terrible. And God works through terrible people to bring about His will. And rather than, rather than sit in judgment on them, we talk about this all the time, rather than sit in judgment on them, we ought to be, like, we ought to be, uh, we ought to see ourselves in the story. We ought to consider, man, if God could have mercy and grace and kindness to these people, then he could do the same thing for me. So that is Genesis chapter 16. Tomorrow we're going to read Genesis 17. Um, we may not read all of it because it's a pretty... Just kind of looking at it, it's a pretty lengthy, um, it's a pretty lengthy section of scripture. So we might not get all the way through Genesis 17 tomorrow, <clears throat> but as I've told you, 
skim, go back, skim through, start at Genesis 1, kind of skim through um, the story, be familiar with what we're going to talk about, read all of Genesis 17 before tomorrow. We may or may not read the whole thing, but you know what? We got nothing but time. So even if we don't, we'll get to it next week. It'll be okay. Um, I'm going to pray. God, help us to see how, help us to see in advance the consequences of our sin. Help us to think through our choices, the decisions that we have to make. Help us to seek out what your desire and your design is for us. And give us the strength and the courage to be obedient to that. Um, I pray for I pray for those who are caught up in the consequences of their sin, who are caught up in the chaos, death, death and destruction um, caused by their own sin. Help them to see you at work. Help them to experience and see, like Hagar, that um, that you are the God who sees us. When we are with you, we can feel seen, we can feel known. That you enter into, you enter into the consequences of our sins. And you love us and you care for us and help us to see, hear, and experience that today. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Praying with you. Praying for you. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Genesis chapter 17. Have a super rest of your day and we'll talk to you tomorrow.